Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another session of the Playhouse. I am super excited about the guest that we have in front of us. This is a one of a kind interview that we are having right here on CTA, the very first of its kind, an honor, a privilege, and I can even see you guys there just wondering how on earth <laughs> did you get this person? Yep, I know people. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of people who you see on screens and you wonder, man, are they ever going to be on the seat? So it's an honor and a privilege. We've had different people on this seat. We've had people from the music industry. We've had people from entrepreneurship. To touch closest to this, we've probably had a designer, fashion industry, Sally Carago, but never in my wildest dreams would I think that on this platform would have an international model from my home country of kenya <laughs> super excited about that for those of you who are clueless about this industry like myself i'm starting with me because my knowledge about the modeling industry is limited let me just give you a little bit of statistics about the lady in front of us before we start the conversation she is an international kenyan model on top of that she has modeled and done her stuff across the world places like new york fashion week paris london Tokyo, Milan, to name but a few. There's a whole circuit that is done and we're going to be learning about that. The kind of people who she has modeled for, I'm talking about the designer, the clothes that she has worn include people like Victoria's Secrets and all the men said... <laughs> Of course, we know Victoria's <laughs> Secret, <laughs> Valentino, Giorgio Armani, to name again but a few. Not only that, she's got such a big heart. She is a philanthropist. She has done, she's given back to her community. In fact, as we've been doing this interview, Yanni, she's just been crisscrossing mm. the whole of this country. And she's just here literally to do this interview before she continues on her travel. She's a philanthropist. She's an entrepreneur and doing a lot for people of her community and also more people outside her community and we're going to be learning and hearing more about that so stay tuned last definitely not least but just some of the tidbits about her she is also a casting director those of you who are wondering how how do you enter adverts am i right mm. she's going to be speaking all about this so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls put your hands together for none other than ajuma nasa Nyana. <laughs> <laughs> Nyana. Yani, the whole morning I've been practicing Actually. just to drop it. <laughs> Pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out to just come onto the CTA seat and just share your life. Thank you so much for having me, Richard. Um, it's my pleasure. Eh? Yes. And kwa sababu watch watch any kwa sababu Derek Aliza Derek Aliza and unajua kuongea Swahili. Okay. I was just like, "No, what is Swahili?" <laughs> no. Chana, eh? of course I do. Eh, yeah. paka trukana I'm fluent Swahili. Uh. Yes, English, Swedish. Ooh. <laughs> hey, how can I forget to mention she is a mother of two yes. that is a huge huge <laughs> thing so I can definitely not leave to mention that out mm. okay let's start this conversation with Juma and, mm -hmm. I, and I can call you a Juma and let's start I like starting this from the very beginning and the first question I love asking on this platform is mm. tell me a little bit about your upbringing where were you born mm -hmm. let's let's get into that okay so I come from of course Trokana Mm -hmm. Parcelous community. My grandfather, first of all, I can say um, he was a very powerful man within our community or my village. Mm. He fought for the British Army. <laughs> Imagine he went all the way to Singapore and all these other kind. Of, I don't know where else, but he used to tell us about his travels when he went to fight mm. for for the army. I think in World War Two. I think he's 102 now. Whoa, he's still Feels alive. strong, yeah. I love that. He's always calling us like, come, I'm dying. I'm dying, then we come, and then he's still there, you know? <laughs> okay, it's not funny, but... <laughs> I know. He's like, I'm bored, I want to die. All my friends are dead, I want to die. What? And then, you know, he's just, God is just keeping him strong still, like mm. he's just there. Yeah, so, yeah, and... Um, I guess he he was kind of like he sort of founded this whole village that we actually live in mm. like if you come to that village it's just my family my auntie here my <laughs> uncle there my cousin you know it's just like the whole village is just my family yeah and wherever they married him hmm? yeah now wait wrong now why now wait wrong what does that mean now wait wrong it means um it means like uh torong <laughs> um, what can i say like um a forest that is uh what, what do you say, like in a row? Oh, okay, okay. Um, how can I say? A hor horizon no. Horizontal is how? It's, uh, yeah, like this. But I get yeah. what you're saying. It's like... Yeah, it's like a horizontal 
forest, uh -huh. like, um, yeah, now we're Torong. So that is where we have a little, you know, Trukana is so dry. Mm. That is where we have a, our little forest of Trukana. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, so that's why it's called Nawe Torong. Um, yeah, so he set up there after, I guess, his um, travels with the army, British army. And um, yeah, he got several wives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. how, like, like how many? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> and are they all in that area? Are they all in, in now in Toronto? Yeah, so Lodwa is the town. That is where he set up and then that's where he came to, to work. Apparently he even knows when Kenyatta was made. Wait, no, when Kenyatta was made. <laughs> he told us like, you know, when, when, when the, the, the president's dad yeah, yeah. came to Trokana, yeah. he was always the one who was guarding him. Oh, when, when Kapenguria 6 were arrested or something yeah, like that? I think and, something. And brought, yeah, I Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really, whatever. He's told us so many times. I don't know. So he was actually guarding the president when he came to, to Lodwa. Ooh. And he used to tell us where he lived and everything. Anyways, so eventually, yeah, he's, he set up in Lodwa. But of course, outside, you always have your... Ushago, mm. wherever you are, even though you're in Lordwa town, there's, you, there's like a Ushago <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> you know. So of course we had he had like a shags a bit further, yeah. which is an hour and a half away. So that's where he set up his traditional wives. Yes, um, there were two there. Um, my grandmother is the first, mm. his first wife. Then the youngest also lived in Lordwa. So my grandmother was situated in Lordwa, and then with the youngest wife. And there, of course, my mother was first born. Mm. No, no, second born of, of my grandmother now. Yes. Now that is his first wife out of four. Mm. Um, yeah. Your mom's mom, your grandma. Yeah, my okay. grandma. Uh -huh. So because my, my mother, my, my grandmother was situated in town. So my, my, um, um, my mom and her siblings went to school. Mm. Obviously, Kosabu, they were in town. Yeah. But of course, their siblings from the other, other oh, stepmothers yes. were herding the goats. It was still very traditional. Okay. Anywho, my mother had me as a, you know, as a teenager. I think she was 15, 16. Mm. Hey. So she was supposed to be in school and things like that. Of course, my grandfather was a, of course, then he was a respected man. He was a big guy there, of course. And um, when he found out my mother was pregnant, he took out his AK-47 and started looking now for my father. What? Yes, he was just looking for him. So the dude had to run. He had to run for his life. He ran off. I heard he ran off to Ethiopia or something. And um, I actually don't know him. Yo. <laughs> yes, I've never met. I've never met him. Or maybe. At some point he came, apparently he came when I was small, but I don't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that story is insane. I know. So he ran off. He just ran for his life and that was it. And um, so my mother, my grandfather was so upset, naturally, because of course you want, um, you know, you're this respected man. And, you know, it's, it's quite, um, what do you call it? It's a shame, shameful. Mm -hmm. Even though, let me ask, was but even though this was... Was this happening a lot within Turkana, where uh, girls were getting married off at a young age? Traditionally, yes, mm -hmm. they were. But now I think him was trying to, you know, change the narrative, mm. sort of. He was going to start changing it by putting at least some of his daughters in school. And then there were some other ones, of course, who were bringing the dowry in, who are traditional. So now my mother, a bit, I guess she was rogue kidogo. <laughs> yeah, so she got kicked out from home. So she lived in different homes in the village and so on. And um, yeah, eventually she was homeless. Even, you know, imagine a small girl pregnant and homeless. Ooh. Yeah, that's quite difficult. So she was living in different places. Sometimes she even went out of town to Uko Risaf and for looking for her uncles. No, Uko, the life, life you know, it's, it's um, nomadic life yeah. out there. So she, she, sometimes she went and visited her uncles, you know, just to get some food, you know, and things like this. And there you walk for like eh, even a month <laughs> or something, you know, three weeks. You yeah. know, it's, it's really, really far. So I don't know how she managed to get there. But eventually she, she gave birth to me. Yeah. Aki, there are so many stories my mother tells me about this. Um, 
yeah, when I was small with her, like how she was really struggling. There was even a po some point, the same thing where she, you know, because she couldn't make it in that little village because she was more or less an outcast. Mm -hmm. She used to try to go out now to her uncles, like I'm saying, and her aunties out in, in, um, in the rural areas. Mm. And, you know, it's not, a, it's, a, it's, it's not an easy life, yep. even out there. So she was telling me once she came, she was with me, yeah, she was coming back from now out there. We have a notorious river mm. <laughs> between Lodwa, between Lodwa and, um, between, no, now when you're crossing over from, you know, when you're coming from the sides of Kakuma. Yes, yes. And so one day this notorious river, now it's been fixed where it, it just flash floods just happened like that out of the blue. So imagine we almost drowned. She told me even like she, she was coming back into Lodwa. I was just a little baby and we almost drowned in that in that river because I, I can't really remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then stories like she, she used to also like um, she started just to make ends meet. She was brewing local brew. Mm. You know, of course, it's illegal. Yeah. And then I used to like I, I didn't like it. She told me I didn't like the fact that she was doing that, brewing alcohol. Mm. So every time she made a little bit of money, I knew where she kept it. I went and I came and threw it in the fire to burn. <laughs> and she'd just be so mad because that is what she, you know, she's was going doing. to feed us. Feed, yeah, that's what's going to feed us. So me, I just go and burn the money because I didn't like what she, you know, how to brew yeah. whatever. Can't even, I, I don't really remember, but she tells me those kind of stories. But eventually, there was this um, Swedish family. I don't know if you remember, there was a, an organization called NORAD from Norway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's a Swedish family that was situated in our village. Somehow they found, of course, this young girl, you know, struggling with a baby, right? And they, managed, and they decided they're gonna take her in. This is now your mom? Yes. What? So they took me in and my mom. So they, they took us in. Um, they put, you know, they took care of me, put my mother back in school, um, and um, yeah, they put her back in, um, of course, to finish her education. Yeah. And then eventually they put her in college for um, social work, mm. as a, you know, the, the program for a so, so, social worker. Yeah. They put her through that. Then while she was in school, they put me in boarding school. Can you mind, they put me to an affluent, like the best Kenyan school, which was in, um, in Tigoni. Called Green Acres. Well, I know British, Green Acres. Yeah, when I come back from them yeah. days. Yeah, so they put me in Green Acres. I came in boarding to win school. a marathon in Green Acres. Oh, did you? Do you know me? I used to, hey, that's where I used to kill it. <laughs> that's where I became an athlete. <laughs> you know those Yeah, the, 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 the I, track, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. running. It was crazy, yeah. yeah. So I went to Green Acres. That's a good Boarding one. school since I was small, like seven, eight, eight, yeah. I went to boarding school. By then, my mother, of course, had started, um, of course, another relationship. So my sister, I had my sister as, as well with me. So she came with me, she was even younger than me. So we went to this boarding school in, in, in Green Acres. So just imagine like a little girl from the village ah, in yeah, Trukana, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? Like my life was like turned around, like it was, it was just like this. You've in started a blink this of an eye. at 100, mm. <laughs> like you started. <laughs> because what I'm used to, you know, our activities at home is running like during the day we're just playing like with um, clay making clay dolls you know building our little manyatas mm. we we used to cook i think some other kenyan communities do the kids play the mm. same way you know how you like have a kanini you make your own kasufuria yeah manyatas and things like this you know you're running around barefoot you know we get thorns in our feet it was just insane. The life was so different, you know. Yeah. In the evening, we have our own, like, um, like uh, our own local, I mean, Trokana games that we play. Mm -hmm. It's like touch rugby. Is there electricity Siku, at this place? Hakuna. No electricity. <laughs> there was no steamer. There was nothing. Um, no TV in the house. Munacheza two inje, you know, and hot sun. Hey, barefoot, you know. It was just, it was totally different compared to, you know, where I went. So eventually I'm, I entered this school, Sijui <laughs> Kingereza. Yeah, I'm not good in English. Yeah. But at least I had caught up Kidogo because now my foster parents, of course they took me in, they started mm. speaking to us. So you started living with your foster parents? Yes. Yeah. You Lodwa. and your mom? Me and my mom, okay. yes. In Lodwa? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hey, by the way. Green so Acres is here uh, Limuru, Tigoni. In Tigoni, yeah. 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 So another funny thing, you know, like, 
of course, my mother was, was um, her mindset was still traditional mm. and so on, of course. And then he's, she's meeting these doctors, right? So there was this thing, that's another thing that happened to me, like a major thing that happened to me in Trokana, which was, um, it's, it's sort of, um, it's a taboo now. It's considered a taboo in this day and age. Mm. So you know how you get sick. You know how mtoto, mto, mto, when, when a kid is teething, mm -hmm. of course they put a lot of things, things inside, yes. in the mouth yeah. to scratch and so on. Mm. And usually that, if, 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 the, if the environment is not clean, of course they get um, bacterial infections. Yes. So Trukanas believe that those teeth are um, it's like demon teeth or mm. something, you know, they are not, um, um, they are nika menoza uchawi, like there's something wrong with those teeth. So what they do, is they take um oh, they uh, take a nini you know it was um wire not a wire oh. nail hey <laughs> they take a nail whether it's rusty or whatever they they sharpen it with a stone yeah and they dig the the, the milk teeth out so the milk teeth are not even showing they go in and extract them from your gum inside your gum and uh, dig them out yeah, 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 seriously yeah, yeah. some of them are this tiny this is what happened to me yeah so i grew i grew up like toothless for so yeah. long you know i didn't i didn't have milk teeth I because to, they, they extracted they them. dug them out yes can you remember it can you remember no that i don't maybe okay. it's part of my post-traumatic stress <laughs> <laughs> yeah Nikki, I'm, <laughs> I'm shaking i don't know what's going on <laughs> with anxiety <laughs> it's not funny but it's funny you know? <laughs> you know, maybe it's just there's post-traumatic stress yeah. and it keeps coming because you know what i'm gonna need what um what do you call that thing what's that thing they do to people so you can go back and relive that oh, yeah. particular moment so yeah. you can get over it. Yeah, yeah. Hypnot hypnosis. hypnosis. I'm going to need hypnosis yeah. in, order, in order to <laughs> overcome that. Because I can't, I can't remember, but you know how they say it's always there in your subconscious. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. <coughs> those, those demons and ghosts that haunt mm. you. Anyways, so that's what happened to me. So this, imagine I was living in a, a, with, a, with a doctor's mm. family. They were, my, the doctor's family was telling her, do not do that because she came and explained to them that the village the village elders or the village women are saying if she doesn't do this my daughter is going to die right so she, it was a push and pull mm. the village is telling her how i'm going to die if they don't extract my teeth the doctor is saying no this can be cured by antibiotics and medicine right mm, 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 mm. so at that point this family was just traveling and I, 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 st I, it was just me and her left now because they were just traveling for a holiday yeah, back yeah. to Sweden to visit, you know, family. Hey, immediately after they left, she Mom. went and took me into the village. <laughs> and yeah, and they dug that out. Yeah, so that is part one of um, those moments I can <laughs> oh, man. point out. Yeah, I Anyways. mean, your life sounds like it just started hard. Yeah, yeah. Le let me, let me, let me apologize mm -hmm. in terms of. It's, uh, part of the reason why I love you sitting here and having mm. this conversation, it's not even just about the modeling. Mm. It's as a Nairobian, uh, we tend to be so naive about what's happening outside this we Nairobi city. Mm. Exactly. Mm. There's a whole bubble that we live in. Mm. Even, forget even Nairobi, even as somebody from Kisumu, Mombasa, uh, Central Province, there's a bubble that we are True. that we almost don't know what's happening to Rukana, mm. Lodwa, Kakuma. We're like, mm. that's, that's not really, is that Kenya? Mm. And I'm not saying, we, we, we're we not conscious about these things. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, just the way that you've started your story, it's like, yo. It's traumatic. I mean, it's a bit, bit traumatic. Mm. Yeah. And also, of course, I got to, I don't know, yeah. You, that Those are things, because I know you wanted to, you, you were really, um, you really, you were interested in looking into like, the life in Trokana. Yep, yep. Yeah. So also another thing I experienced that was a little bit traumatic, of course, for them it's um, it's a healing healing process. Mm. So it's like my mother, I, I, I saw my mother being, um, what do you call it? She had, apparently she had heart palpitations mm. and the way Trokanas um, go about healing that uh, particular whatever it is that i don't know how they diagnose mm. that but the way they go about healing um that ailment was they dug they, they take you to the forest um to the forest they dig a big hole and they throw ash in it you sit in this um hole they put ash 
all over you, right? Me, I'm watching this. My mother being done for this. Put ash all over you. My mother is looking very strange, you know? Because mm. she's covered, she's white covered. Mm. And this, all you can see is her eyes and things like this. You know, for a child, it looks like they are killing her, mm. right? And then they take a goat, a goat, they put it inside your mouth. It's like a kid, mm. not a fully grown goat. Mm. They put it inside your, her mouth, huh? They beat it so it can scream inside her mouth. Can you imagine? Whoa. Yeah, so it can just, they beat the goat so it can scream inside your mouth. And then they take the goat, they put it all over you, and then they slaughter. And the blood just pours all over you. That <gasps> oh my God. is some crazy So scary. Rituals. Yay. Like, that's so scary. some next level mm, stuff. Mm, so they, you know, so they're supposed to take care of your heart palpitations. So that's another thing that, oh my gosh, I, I thought it was quite traumatizing. <laughs> So, so every time my mother was sick, I was so scared mm. that I'm going to do some crazy stuff to her. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay, let me... Let, no, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's let's level with doctor. <laughs> kind of, kind of. Yeah. Kind. No, but it's not, it's not a tea. It's not, it's not uchawi yes. for them. Yeah. It's, 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 it's medicine. It's, it's medicinal. You know, they mm. don't know this um, modern medicine, so they'll do whatever it is to save Did she get better? Somebody... I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get it. I don't know, but it's just, yeah. So this this is part of the things I would like to go and revisit that, you know, don't happen anymore because mm. it's taboo now, right? But it's nice to remind people this is how we used to treat this certain thing. You I know? get it. Yeah. So I would love to go back and, you know, experience that and yeah. just to show Kenyans and the world, like, you know, I'm so happy to hear the it. The sort I mean, of practices that we used to <laughs> yeah, it, it, go it, through. I, I know it's uh, from 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 my. It just sound, it sounds crazy. Like mm. I, from my perception, mm. uh, but I know to other people that was norm. Uh -huh. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was it, it was a norm. Let me ask. Tell me about. So you said the first time you went to school was to Green Acres. You no, know, I started in Lodwa, okay, but yeah. not for long. Mm. Not for long. Did you have friends in Lodo that used to play Of course, with? My, my, my whole, I mean, I've always been, I don't know, a people's person. Mm. Ever since, it's just who I am, ever since I was small. So I had so many friends. Mm. Yeah, both boys, girls, so a lot of village kids. I had a lot of friends yeah. in the village. Um, yes. But your mom at that time is not staying with her dad it's in that village. No, no, no. She no. was kicked out, she was kicked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, of course, at the end, they reconciled. Yeah. But yeah, eventually, so she went to school. I went to school. We st I started in Lodwa, but not long, nursery school. Mm. Then the first, and then I went to maybe the best, my best memories of school was I started in Green Acres. Okay. Yeah, and then, so it was a bit different. All of a sudden, there's all these kids, you know, everybody's wearing proper shoes. All, you know, I, I've been bought for shoes, jeans. I think it was the first time I wore jeans. Mm. <laughs> I've been fought for jeans, shoes, you know, I don't know, just everything. Bafuta in you know, all these kind of things. And I was just a small girl, but still, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have those things. Um, yeah, so I, we started off like that. The shopping already was fascinating because mm. I was like, oh, oh, this is for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we get to school, you know, my bed, you know, I have my own bed, my own locker. My bed is, my bed is, you know, made nicely. Mm. My clothes are being washed, you know. I mean, I was a small girl still. Of course, they needed to take care of me like that. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, and then, but then it was a bit, um, I don't know, culture shock, I think. Because mm. mm. the school was entail like, um, kids from all over the world. Yep. There was Chinese, English, American. Tanzanians, you know, all, mm. and then it was affluent children yep. who were very modern. They knew so much more about the world than me. They watched television. Everybody was talking about different cartoons. And, you know, I was never in that conversation because mm. I, I couldn't, there was, I didn't know anything about that world, right? So, oh, and how they bathe in bathtubs and things like this. I had no idea about bathtubs. Mm. I, never, I had never really been in a bathtub. I, yeah, until of course I, I I went to visit now my my um, my foster parents. Mm. So when I was home, I didn't really have what these children had, you know, all these fancy homes, fancy cars. They rode in, mm. you know, um, 
you know, phone, they used to call each other. <laughs> mm. So I wasn't really, I, I, could, I didn't really fit in. Yeah. Um, and English also was difficult. Are you learning English yeah, at this time? Yeah, English was also hard. At the same time, there was that barrier as well. So I don't know. Um, from that early age, I felt different. I looked different. Mm. I, um, I spoke differently <laughs> as well. But um, it, w it was okay. The teachers were very nice, mm. were very supportive. They understood where I came from. Yeah, um, that was good. Which wasn't exactly the same with the children, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the children now are just like, yeah. Yeah, you know how it is with children when, when there's something different about you, that's what they will always pick on. And most of the time it's because of their own self-esteem, mm. right? They always want to feel above you. Maybe they're hurting themselves. Mm. So, of course, they will always How pick. How they project it. Yeah, they always pick whoever it is, whether you're tall, whether you're dark, whether you're short. What They will always pick on that unique thing about you, which, which usually is your superpower That's at the end of the so day. <laughs> powerful like I, it's it, so like, funny you know what you, know, it's always funny like that yeah. though yeah mm? like what you've said is so powerful mm. they it's the it's the concept of what they are pointing as your weakness is actually your uniqueness yeah and that uniqueness is your superpower yes exactly so that is what i realized at the end of it all mm. yes so over there i used to you know i don't know it was um yeah, it was hard to in the hard in the beginning because hard to learn English. You know, all the subjects were in English and so on. But I caught up somehow, and then we came to realize I was actually a superb athlete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I used to run and win everything, whether I was practicing or not. You get, put a hockey stick in my hand. Hey, You're good. I was, hey, I'm good. Yani, sport in sports. Yeah. I was just anything. I was just a natural. Yep. Tennis, ta ta ta. Yani, like when I was just a kid from Trokana. I had never held a hockey stick. Never held a tennis racket. Yeah. Nothing. Swimming, doyo mimi. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing, despite the fact that I was, I stood out. Like a sore, like a sore thumb. Yeah. Were you tall, taller than? At yes, this time? I was taller than everybody. Taller than all the boys. <laughs> I used to come from Nini, like holidays. The cooks used to say, "Hey, where were Mtoto? What did they give you when you go home?" Because <laughs> every time I came, You've I grown. grew. Hey, I've grown. I've grown. I've grown. <laughs> and of course, darker. <laughs> mm, I was darker. Yeah. So I got like teased a lot mm. about how dark I was. Mm. Uh, about how dark I was, and how tall I was, how skinny I was, how was I, how was pararad. Mm. <laughs> and you know the crazy thing that you're saying, um, you're not being teased about your darkness by whites. It's not a racist thing. No, it is blacks. It is the black it's the kids. Blacks, yes, the white the white kids are not even any bothering with me. <laughs> they are playing with me to Nakimbizana, whatever. It's the black kids that were teasing me. No, no. Oh, you look man. like a monkey. Charcoal, sujui, darkness. You know how all these memes of of um, dark skin tones, mm. they were all being said to me. What? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the thing is that it's so funny because it really killed the concept of beauty. Mm. Concept of beauty within me, you know? It, it killed it in a way that when I looked at, at myself in the mirror, I saw an ugly person. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, was really hard. I saw an ugly person. And then also the funniest thing, even um, in Trukana, I am, I am darker than usual, mm. right? Darker than um, an average um, Kenyan, right? Yes. So Atta, when we used to go to the knee, they used to ask me, because I just wanted to belong I wanted to belong to Kenya. I am Kenyan and I just wanted to belong to Kenya. Yeah. But sometimes like when we're traveling, when we travel to Lodwa and because you have a lot of refugees, um, what do you call it? Refugees coming in yeah, to, from Sudan, to, from from Sudan from illegally. Yes, yeah. Imagine I had to use to, I, my mother used to have to nini, show my birth certificate that I'm born in Kenya. What? Eh, I used to feel so bad. Hey, hey, mama. Una peleka my refugee wapi? Can you imagine? Mm? What? Yeah, me and my sister.